our precious pastors and religious leaders. We will come to you today to this seminar. It is a series of seminar that has a name, How Will the Time of Revelation Look Like? These seminars are being organized by the Church of New Heaven and New Earth. In Korean, it's Shincheonji. My name is Victoria Yuskibova, and I'm really happy to be here with you today. By the glory of God, I can prepare our heart for today's main part, that it will be God's Word. These seminars are part of international educational project. This project, 20,000 pastors took part in. We also organized this seminar this summer, and because of good reactions and positive feedback, we decided to organize these seminars again. Because we came here for the God's Word. So let's invite God's Spirit through the prayer. And I will pray. Our dear Holy Father, thank you that you gave us today the new day. Thank you that we can know you, our true Father God, and glorify you. Thank you, dear Father, for the life you gave us and for the living spirit that can dwell in our hearts. We thank you for the, for the sacrifice of our precious, of your precious Son, Jesus Christ, who shared your blood, his blood for our life. Dear Father, we are born to this world with nothing, and everything we have comes from you. And we are raising thankful heart to you. We are praying for this time that you will be here with us, and your spirit will lead this time. We are also praying for all pastors, your servants, that connected today. Please make their heart to be good soil today during the seminar that your seed will be planted well. Dear Father, we also are praying for technical part. Please make everything to work smoothly. We are praying for all this in the most righteous name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so dear pastors, today to prepare our heart, we will listen to the praising song. But before we'll pray, Praise song. Let's firstly to play a small game. I will ask you all together to close your eyes. I will close with you. And once you have a closed eyes, I will ask you, what do you see? Yes, maybe your answer will be nothing because we have seen only black board, but when you open your eyes, what do you see? You can see many things, right? God gave us the physical eyes to see things that he created around us. Beautiful things. But also, God gave us the spiritual eyes. God gave us the spiritual eyes to see him and to see his will, about which we will speak today. So let's praise the God through the praising song. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. And I will ask the technical part to play the song. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want I want to see you, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. 
Amen. I hope we could prepare a little more our heart through the praising song. And now it is time to meet God. But how we can meet a God? According to the John 1, 1, God is word. So, precious pastors, I do believe as a religious leaders, you was learning well. But once you will have open heart, brave heart, and thirsty heart, I do believe you will hear God's message today. I will invite for the word our precious pastor, Umberto. He is coming from the Italy originally, and God is using him really widely. Not only he is delivering and preaching God's word, but also in the summer, he put all God's work here in Prague, and he decided to go to Ukraine to serve God there. He was helping also in organizing Christian camp for children. Indeed, our pastor Umberto, he is really busy, but because he do believe that once we have God's word in our heart, we can do anything. Because at this time, God will lead us and God will bless everything. So he does understand and realize the importance of God's word. So it's why he is here to deliver God's word to you. So I would like to invite our precious Pastor Umberto. Dear pastors, I greet you and welcome you to this uh, seminar that we are starting today. Uh, today it's a special day and I'm really thankful that all of you came from different parts of Europe. Uh, this is a seminar of Xinjiangji, New Heaven, New Earth, and this is the church that I belong. I'm so thankful uh, to have you here and today as I know, we have pastors from different parts of the, uh, Europe. So we have Ukraine pastors, uh, Russian pastors, Czech, and even Georgian pastors. That's why I did my best 
to learn even my church in your language. And that's how I will try to do now. <laughs> Let me try to read it. First of all, in Ukrainian, uh, which is Nove Nebo Nova Zemlia. I hope it's good. I hope I pronounce it well. <laughs> and then in Russia, Novoe Nebo Nova Zemlia. And then in Czech, Nove Nebo Nova Zemlia. And then in Georgian, Akali Zetsa Akali Mitsa. <laughs> yes. So I tried my best uh, to say it correctly, but please forgive me if I didn't do it <laughs> that much well. <laughs> anyway, uh, today, uh, as I said, we are starting this uh, seminar, and this is just the first of uh, uh, several seminars that we will have. And uh, what is the purpose of coming here is to get to know more about God's Word. This is not just a normal seminar, but it's seminar specifically made for pastors. So, which means um, all of you already studied, I believe, uh, God's Word. But for sure, during this time, you can uh, achieve more knowledge and uh, through this also have more realization and also deliver this word uh, to your members. So thank you for coming today. I know all of you have a really busy schedule, uh, but even in the middle of this busy schedule, you found the time to come here today. And uh, I wish that uh, we can all enjoy even this time. And through God's word, I believe even Holy Spirit can come to us and uh, unite us with the same word. Then, I think we can start, and uh, the topic of today, as you can see, is what we could not see from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, you might have many different qu questions about this title. Uh, there is something that from Genesis to Revelation, it has to be more discovered. Even though you studied a lot, even about the history of God, but what is the thing that we couldn't see from Genesis till Revelation? First of all, uh, let us start. I will play first slide. Yes. First of all, uh, all of you are men of religion, right? So you are dealing with religion daily. And um, we have to understand actually why we have the religion. The word religion uh, in the Western culture is coming from a word that, Latin word that is religare. This meaning is reconnection. So there must be something that has to be reconnected. And what is this? What is this something? Right? It means that something got disconnected. But also what is interesting is, if you look at the Eastern culture, religion also meaning is the best teaching. Mm -hmm. So what is the best teaching? Is the best teaching that some man can give instead of another man, you think? It cannot be, right? This best teaching is a best teaching for a reason, because this teaching is coming from God. Right. So, as you can see here, the best teaching from God that tells how to build the reconnection between God and people. But if we have to reconnect something, it means something got disconnected. Then let's see through next slide what was disconnected. Yes. We can see since uh, God's history start, and God's history is 6,000 years of history. That is a long history. But since the beginning, there is something that connects all the eras of the Bible. First of all, in uh, Genesis uh, 2.9, we can see that in the Garden of Eden, there were two types of tree, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? But we can see in Genesis 2, 16 to 17, that in that time, something happened. 
I will ask now our evangelist to read these verses for us. You are free to eat from any tree of a garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Amen. Amen. So from the beginning of the Bible, we can see that God is delivering a promise, like a covenant with each man in the Bible. And the first man was Adam. In that time, what he said to him, you, if you will eat the tree, from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die. This is what God tell, told to Adam. But how Adam, Adam received this promise, this command from God? So we know already the result. So God, even though he gave this promise, but Adam, by not listening, and even Eve, together with him, they listened to the serpent voice, which means they didn't listen to God, and in the end, they betrayed and died. But many people have questions in the Bible. Uh, how come Adam, he has 930 years in that time? Is it really true? How come? Is it really true that a man can reach that kind of age? Maybe that's false. Maybe that's not true. Actually, we have to think about something. In that time, in the Garden of Eden, not only Adam and Eve were there, but even God was in the Garden of Eden. Then, who is God? Actually, he is the source of life, right? In God, there is life. That's why it was possible for Adam to live this much. But once he betrayed, that's the time when God has to leave. What is the reason why God has to leave Adam? Is because sin entered on the earth. Now let's think about it. God is holy being, right? Then can he live with sin or not? He cannot. That's why God has to be disconnected from this earth, and that's why once sin enters in the world, then also together with that, even death entered. As you can see, from the time of Adam until today's time, uh, all the people, nobody excluded, was dying until now, physically. But when we think about it, it doesn't make that much sense because that cannot be the purpose of God for our lives, right? So, coming back to, uh, to the uh, Genesis 6, 3 and 5, we can see, my spirit will not contend with humans forever. That's how we can check, like, how God left in that time. Then, once God leaves, that's not the end. He must find a way how to come back to this earth. But first of all, what we need to realize is, once the sin enter and God is not ruling anymore on this earth, then who is the one who is ruling on this earth? Who was the one who deceived Adam and Eve? That's the spirit of the betrayal, which is the spirit of Satan, right? Then let's uh, have a look uh, to the verse that can testify about this. Let's read Ephesians 2, verse 2. Ephesians 2, 2. In which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Amen. Amen. So we can see who is the one who is ruling over the earth once God left. Then from now on, God has to solve a problem, which is the problem of the sin. And he's trying to solve this problem all over 
the errors. But do you think it was easy to solve this problem until now? It was so difficult, very difficult, even until today's time, but God never gave up on this. That's why we can see in each generation, after Noah, after Adam, God came to Noah. Also, he established promise with him and said, I will send the flood. But even though the family of Noah in that time was saved, but then through the second son, Ham, also the sin entered once again. That's why it was not possible for God to come back. Then God tried once again in the after the ninth generation and came to Abraham. In that time, he promised to Abraham, uh, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars of the sky. Also, he promised that he will bring out from the uh, land where they will be slaves for 400 years their people. But Abraham couldn't see this promise fulfilled in his time. But anyway, what is clear is God, every time he promised, he accomplished his promise. That's why even after 600 years, God came to who? To Moses. And through Moses, he fulfilled that promise. We can see in the time of Exodus, uh, Moses is bringing out from the land of Egypt the Israelites. In that time, uh, as God promised, where the Israelites were supposed to go to the land of Canaan. But that process was uh, not very easy, even in that time. Uh, we can see that actually even Moses was not able to enter in that land, but that promise was fulfilled to, through Joshua, who entered in the land of Canaan, and the promise was finally fulfilled in that time. So, you can see how the work of God is always repeating. There is always promise coming to one person, to one pastor, and always God is going and fulfill that promise. What happened after entering the land of Canaan? There was a time uh, of uh, judges of 300 years. And after that, also we can see the time of the kings. In the time of Exodus, God came to the Israelites and he gave a covenant to them. He, he said, if you will keep my promise, you will be my kingdom and priest, even though the whole earth is mine you will be my special possession. Then, um, what the Israelites had to do at the time, they should keep the covenant, right? But this is something they didn't do. That's how we can check at the time of Solomon uh, in 1 King 11 uh, that he is betraying and how he betrayed actually we have to understand that God gave the law to the physical Israelites. In that time, by giving that law, what the Israelites had to do, they had to keep that law. First law was that the Israelites were supposed to worship just one God, just one God. But Solomon, even though he was full of wisdom, and even though uh, he was really one of the greatest like kings of Israel. In the end, he ended up by betraying and by worshipping uh, many gods through the women that were in his kingdom. Now, I want to ask you to all the pastors, after this time, there is no chosen people here. Because we can see after Solomon, uh, Israel, they divided in two like north and south. So after this time, I want to ask you, do you think God gave up on his chosen people or not? If you can raise your hand. I can see. <laughs> Nobody is raising hands, so this is good. <laughs> yes, it is true. God is never... <laughs> God is never giving up on the, his people. 
And uh, we have the proof of this because after Solomon betrayed, then God had to find a way how to come back once again. So he did this by coming to the prophets, especially, we can see that he gave a promise through Jeremiah. In Jeremiah 31, 22, he's saying that I will create a new thing. And also, he promised about two more things, which is sowing the two types of seed in Jeremiah 31, 27, and also establishing a new covenant. This is promised in Jeremiah 31, 31. According to this promise, God came to who? To Jesus. Jesus, he was the promised pastor who came in the first coming. Right? And according to the promise of the prophets, he came and gave and sowed the seed. Right? So he sowed the good seed. But actually, when we read the Bible and we read about sowing the seed, it looks like everything is not very much understandable. Everything is in parable, right? So when we think about the seed, uh, if I ask, what, what is the seed? What is the seed that is sown? We can have many different ideas, many different interpretations, or maybe can it be faith? Uh, or can it be kindness? Can it be uh, something else? I don't know. <laughs> but surely we must speak every time according to the Bible. Why God gave us this Bible? The reason is because according to his word, everything can be fulfilled. That's why uh, to understand when Jesus sowed the seed, we have to go to Luke 8, 11. And in Luke 8, 11, it is written that the word of God is the seed. That means that Jesus, when he came in the first coming, he saw the good seed, which was the seed of God. But in the same field, another entity saw another seed. This is the seed of the enemy, is the seed of Satan. Mm. But not only this, not only this, also Jesus did another important work, which is he established a new covenant. Now I will ask our evangelist to read the content of this new covenant, which is written in Luke 22, verse 18. Luke 22, 18. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the wine until the kingdom of God comes. Amen. Amen. Here Jesus is giving the promise for future events. So once again, Jesus came, he sowed the seed and also establishing a new covenant. He gave a promise for future events. Now, when we look at the Bible, uh, what we can see surely, everything until the letters that we have in the Bible, everything is already fulfilled. Then we should ask ourselves, in which time are we living now? Because God, in each era, is giving a covenant, right? But then, do I also be part? Am I also part of some covenant in which time I am living now? When we look at the 66th book of the Bible, only the book of Revelation is missing now. Then in which time we are living in today's time? Hmm. Uh, when Jesus came in the first coming, uh, you know, there were many people who were speaking also and teaching also uh, religious scriptures. We can see um, Pharisees and Sadducees in the first coming, right? Um, but Jesus came according to the promise of God. Even though there were pastors in that time and those pastors, they were teaching their members. But how come? they didn't recognize the Son of God who came exactly according to how it was promised. There must be reason, right? 
even though Jesus came and God was working through Jesus, according to Matthew 3.16, we can see that the Spirit of God is descending on Jesus, meaning also in John 1.1, uh, God is the Word. And in John 4.24, God is Spirit. Then the Spirit of God was working through Jesus, and Jesus was delivering the same Word of God to the chosen people. And even though many pastors were already studying the scriptures, but they didn't recognize the one who was sent by God. Then, when we think about this, we have to uh, think uh, actually why God gave this promise, right? And why uh, in today's time we have religion. What is the religion? As we said, religion is to reconnect, right? But how we can reconnect practically to God? The teaching, the teaching is not the teaching of men. This teaching is a teaching that is coming from God. If this teaching is coming from God, there must be an evidence. Why we can say in today's time that the Bible is the book that can lead us to salvation. Because in the Bible, there is the proof that God is working through each era. Then, when we look at the time of Revelation, isn't it same? Even in Revelation time, if God is working, we must have a proof of this. Right? Dear pastors, you are in the position of giving life or death to your members. But what we have to know, surely, is that one day, all of us, we will stand in front of God. We will be there in front of God, and God will ask, did you lead your members to life, or did you lead your members to death? How are you going to answer to this? One book is remained in the, in the uh, Bible. And in this book, it is promised that Jesus has to come back in the second coming, right? But what if the second coming is here? Are you able to recognize or not? You have to be conscious and you have to be able to explain to your members once they come. If your members come to you and say, can you explain me what is the content, what is written in the book of Revelation? Are you confident to testify this to your members? In the book of Revelation, uh, there is also a promise. And uh, Jesus promised to come back. As we said now, he came in the first coming and saw the seed. But that's not the final purpose, just sowing the seed. In the end of the age, it is promised that there will be a time of harvest, right? But this is not a physical harvest. This is talking spiritually. There are some people who are supposed to be harvested, and these people... What is the condition? They must have this seed of God. That's why in Revelation 14.1, we can see that 144,000 people are standing together with the Lamb in Mount Zion. Ah, then if these people are in Mount Zion together with the Lamb, we know who is the Lamb. The Lamb is Jesus, right? Then it means that those people are together with Jesus. Now, let me ask you, are you together with Jesus in today's time or not? Can you say confidently, I am together with Jesus? We can have uh, different imaginations or dif we can say different things. Or oh, someone says, ah, I believe in Jesus. That's how I can be saved. I have a strong feeling in my heart that Jesus is with me. Then I will be saved. But have a look at this. Even in the first coming, it was same actually. 
what people, what the teachers of the law were teaching to the members was something different according to the word of God. It was really different. That's why they couldn't recognize Jesus who came according to the promise. But only the 12 disciples, they could recognize that he was the one sent by God. Then who could be saved in the first coming? The 12 disciples, right? At the same time, this work cannot be finished there because when we look at today's world, do you see that the sin, the problem of the sin ended or not? Actually, we can see many, many different things uh, that are very ugly and to see. And also, uh, as a humans, we don't understand why certain things are happening. Even we can see now in today's time in Ukraine, here there are uh, Ukraine pastors, and I think you feel especially uh, this problem of the war, which was never solved until today's time, right? Even there are different earthquakes, like all over the earth. Then these problems were never solved, actually. But someone says, ah, Jesus came in the first coming, and now, just by believing in Jesus, like our sin can be atoned. But is it really like this? Do you see the end of the sin in today's time? Do you see the end of wars? It is not, right? Then that's why we have to more understand about the book of Revelation and which time we are living in. Why? Because in this time it is promised some work. Some work that Jesus will do once he comes back. As we said, there is a work of harvest, as we can see in Revelation 14, and also work of sealing. And who are taking part to this work of salvation? In Revelation 7, we can see the 12 tribes, these 144,000 who are saved. But you might ask yourself, is it only 144,000 who will receive salvation? Is not. God wants to save everyone, all humanity. It's also written in Revelation 7.14 about the great multitude in white. This great multitude in white is an uncountable number. No one can count. These also are the people who will be saved and wash their robes with the blood of Jesus. But then, when, if, we un if we don't understand what is the work, what is the work that Jesus is doing in this time, how can we deliver same word to our members. Then you must reflect, how am I delivering the word, the word in my church? Do I know everything about this last book of Revelation? If not, if not, I should be more humble myself. I have to humble myself even though I studied, even though I studied, I need to understand what is the promise of God. Even though in the first coming, the 12 disciples, they were people, uh, actually they were doing very humble jobs. They never studied even one time uh, the scriptures. But by listening to the word of the promised pastor who was Jesus, actually their end was in the end they were saved, salvation. You as a pastor, you are in the position to really give salvation to your members but in order to do this first we need to understand what kind of work jesus will do in today's time if i get to know about this then i can save myself and also save my house <laughs> right so there are many things to say but anyway uh, we will go through the next seminar more in detail and see more about like what the revelation is saying and also uh, one by one we will get to know actually uh, what the revelation is speaking about because the book of revelation is a book that is written in prophecy 
right? But if it is the time when it is fulfilled, we should be able to recognize it. Then, coming back to the first point, religion is to reconnect, right, us with God. So God gave actually the answer in the time of revelation. He promised in Revelation 21 that he will come back to a certain place. This place is called new heaven, new earth. And the first heaven and first earth will pass away. What does it mean? One era is finishing, new era is creating. In order to do this work of creation, it is needed some effort. Even though we say, Jesus, I love you, I love you, but what Jesus said in the first coming, in John 14, 23, he said, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. Then, are we obeying now the teaching of Jesus? Do we know what Jesus is teaching us in today's time? Let us be more humble, and in religion, the purpose of religion is this, to solve the problem of sin. This is what we have to understand. Why do we have the religion? Because sin is here. But if there is no sin, we don't need any religion, because God would be already together with us. So why God is giving us the religion? To solve this problem. The only way the problem of the sin is solvable is by listening and by understanding God's word and God's work. So, dear pastors, uh, I'm really thankful that today you are coming here and listening to this word. Uh, in today's time, uh, Many, many pastors are coming, as our evangelist already spoke. There are 20,000 pastors who are coming and listening to the word of new heaven and new earth. Let's think and reflect. As a pastor, I have a choice. What kind of pastor I want to be in today's time? Should I be the pastor who lead my members to salvation, or should I just deliver some word that I learned from the school? If it is like this, then it's really up to you. But God is giving us the answer in this final book of the Bible. Everything from Genesis until the letters is already done. Then let's ask, Ourself, in which time I am living now. If it's the time of revelation, I should learn and think more like how to answer to my members according to the truth. Amen. This is all for today, and uh, we will have more seminars. I'm so thankful that today you came and uh, listened to this word, and uh, I see really uh, many new faces, and uh, thank you so much for coming. I believe God, even today, will bless your day. And now uh, I will give the word back to our evangelist who will finish. And I will finish before that with the prayer. Dear Father God, thank you so much that you are um, bringing us today here on this place, even though we are uh, in Zoom and we cannot be united like physically, but we believe that uh, you are very joyful and happy today to gather all these pastors here. I pray that uh, for the future, uh, all of these pastors will be able to learn this word of revelation, which is so much important to lead all of the members. Please, Father, let us not to just look at the history uh, of the Bible, which is a bloodshed history, uh, just as a history, but to learn also from uh, all of the people that went through the history of God and also to receive this teaching in our heart and mind. Let us to be those who are um, saved in the time of revelation and that very careful about the words that are delivering to the members. Thank you so much that even today you are giving us life 
and we know that in your word there is life and there is light. We believe that by coming closer to you, everything can be possible. So I pray for all of the pastors that even today you can protect them and lead them for whatever they need to do. And uh, please help us to uh, be more united and together for the next seminar. And I believe that uh, you can bless all of the lives of each of the pastors. And I pray all of this in the most righteous name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much. That's all for today. And I give the word back to our evangelist. Amen. Precious pastors, is not our Father God indeed amazing that he has endured for so long time to come back to us? In each era, God tried to come to some pastor, to his people. But they always, always betrayed it's why God promised for us a revelation. It's a book where God is promising that he will come back. It's our pastor, Umberto, said, huh, indeed, is a question of sin solved. If there is still wars, earthquake, if sin would be solved, why it's happening? Today, we just looked into intro part. What we are going to speak about during next seminars, about through God's will in today's time. We, took, we could hear also that we are living in the time of revelation, and God is promising certain place that He will come back. You are the pastors, you are the leaders, you are leading God's sheep. You are the one who should indeed teach the true God's will to your believers. That can, can know what the true God's will, follow it and be saved. So let's together learn and study true God's will during next seminars. And we are looking forward to you on the next Friday. And by this, we'll finish today's seminar and let's give glory to God for everything. I wish you to have a blessed evening and looking forward to next Friday. Дякуємо дуже. Гарного вечора всім. Нехай Бог благословить. Гарного вечора, Сергій. Гарного вечора. Гарного вечора. вечора. Валерія, пастор Володимир, пастор Сергій. Гарного вечора. Пастор Олег, гарного вечора. На все добре. Бог благослови. Бог вас любить.